We're chatting today with Megan Rhodes Smith, New Belmont head softball coach, and let me uh, give you a warm welcome. Thank you, I appreciate Belmont. it. You came all the way down the boulevard. I did, it was a long time, hit a little traffic, but I made it. All right, talk to me, uh, if, if, if people are watching us right now, there are probably some people watching that would know you better as Megan Rhodes, perhaps, mm -hmm. than Megan Smith. Yes. Because you're like, Hometown girl? That's right, homegrown. Homegrown. I grew up at Lipscomb. I okay. went K through 12 there. My dad worked at the university, so I basically grew up on that campus and have grown up on a college campus my whole life. And so when I was ready to shift into coaching, it just felt very natural. But it especially feels natural being in Nashville because this is a place that I love and that I think has grown me and just means a lot to me in so many ways. Now, so Philip Hutchison and Christian Ryman aren't mm -hmm. too mad at you for moving down the boulevard, are they? They're not, they're we'll, not. We'll, we'll talk some more about that in a little bit, but growing up in Nashville, and particularly, particularly Dad uh, working you know, in, in, the Lips, in the Lipscomb uh, organization, mm -hmm. um, you've always sort of had that combination of your faith, academics, yes. and athletics. Yes. That's like you said, I've always had it. It's been something that's there that's very real and important. And for me, it feels strange, or it would feel strange for that not to be there, to not be able to be who I am and speak about my faith and the importance of the whole person. I, I don't think that we are separate in any way. I think everything works together. And somewhere along the line, you picked up softball. Yes. And started Throwing it, pitching it? That's right. Was it throwing first or pitching first? Throwing first. Throwing first. Pitching was an accident. Uh, I want to hear that story. Our pitcher was sick, and I had no intentions of pitching because you had to stand in the circle and right. you know everybody's looking at you. And that didn't sound like my cup of tea. And so our pitcher got sick the first day, and so they lined us all up, and whoever could get close to the strike <laughs> zone got to pitch that day. So. Afterwards, my dad said, we should practice just in case this happens again, and just kept going and eventually fell in love. What age were you when that happened? Nine. You were nine? Yes. So an accidental pitcher. Yes. That worked out pretty well for you. It did, it did. Uh, I can, my, my most vivid memories of it are being in the, in the front yard of my house, uh, throwing with my dad, Overthrowing him occasionally, maybe more than occasionally. No broken windows? No broken windows. Okay. Somehow, okay. I, I did make him have a black toe one day, and that lasted for a long time, and he never let me live that down. But uh, yeah, just pitching takes a lot of time, and so there was just a lot of those uh, front yard workouts, and the more I did it, the more I liked it, and eventually was able to throw for the high school team at Lipscomb and play travel ball. and get recruited by the University of Tennessee, so it's So a we'll come to UT Knoxville advice. in a second, yes. but, but at what point, put you on the spot here, mm -hmm. at what point did you go, I'm pretty good at this? I think that I knew that I was good for the area around 12, okay. but I didn't really, it didn't hit me that I could play in college and play at a high level until about my sophomore year in high school. I was very oblivious. Okay, so you end up at, at, at UT Knoxville. Mm -hmm. that, that in itself is a pretty impressive feat and then a, a terrific career with the volunteers. Yes, uh, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, but one of the best things I've ever done. I learned so much about myself, about perseverance. That's where I uh, learned even more about the mental game and was able to get my master's there as well. And so it's one of those decisions that you look back on and say, this was so hard, but it was so great. And there was so much value in every struggle and every triumph. And it's made me a lot of who I am today. Three times to Oklahoma City? Yes, sir. Three times? Do they know what that means? Oklahoma City, the College World Series. Yes, sir. In the softball, and mm -hmm. you did it three times. Okay. We had a great team. Then somewhere also along the way, you decided that you wanted to teach girls how to play this game that you love. Yes. 
I, I think teaching was in my blood. My mom started off as a music teacher. My dad was a music professor at Lipscomb for 40 years. And I think if you go back through my family, there's a lot of teachers. So it's just something that felt natural to me. I like to share what I know. I love to learn. And getting the chance to come do that every single day and do it on a softball field, just, it feels surreal. I can't the, believe people pay me to do this. The view from your workplace over at Rose oh Park my goodness. is uh, it's pretty much It's stunning. Yeah. It's stunning. I don't know anywhere that has the view that we have. and. I think it's the best place to watch softball in Nashville. Absolutely is. All right, so you decided you wanted to be a coach. Mm -hmm. um, and what what was it that, that made you want to be a coach? You got this love of teaching. By the way, are we going to perhaps hear the national anthem from the head coach in this season? Oh, no. No? no. I just heard all this music <laughs> talk. I, I thought, you know, you no. might be up for the national anthem or something. Uh, maybe as a joke. Oh. <laughs> I don't think we joke about the national anthem. No. Uh, no it, Teaching, I think it, it was somewhat accidental. I thought I would be a sports psychologist, which in a way is mm -hmm. teaching. You're teaching people skills for the field, but uh, to become a coach, again, I, I sort of fell into it. My husband and I moved to Georgia right after I finished my master's and I didn't have a job and wasn't really sure what to do with myself, just like many young adults. And he said, you need a coach. And so, we started looking, found a found a coaching job, and over that year just realized I loved it. I didn't want to be away from the game, but I loved being able to teach something that had meant so much to me and something that had grown me up and, and taught me a lot about life. And to have the opportunity to do that for the next generation, just, it felt right. You, you mentioned your husband, Kevin, a little while ago. And yes. You got, got the two girls. What's What are your plans, coach slash mom? in terms of uh, your two daughters and softball? Well, it's basically to continue what we've been doing. And my fear uh, when they were born was that at some point they, they would say, Mom, this is, this is too much. We hate that you do this. And they, they don't. They love it. They, they love the girls on the team. They love softball. They watch as much softball on TV as they can get. They are huge fans of the game. My husband, he wants them to see their mom go out and do what she wants to do. So he's incredibly supportive. Uh, he wants them to know that that's, that's something that can be in their future too. Whatever it is they want, that they can go Get can those college happen. recruiters on the, on the phone right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> As a pitcher, and I know you've got a great track record working mm -hmm. with pitchers, uh, even at, at Lipscomb University which is sort of known for its really solid pitching, so I just mm -hmm. paid you a compliment Thank right you. there. Um, working with pitchers, and yet you are a pitcher, is that sometimes frustrating that you want them, I don't know how to say this, you want them to be as good as you? I don't think that's ever the frustration because I was not, I would not consider myself to be an elite skill, uh, an elite athlete. Like I wasn't born into that, and it was obvious that I would become some sort of mm -hmm. elite athlete. A lot of it was hard work and um, having really great teachers and coaches along the way that taught me taught me how to get around any limitations that I had. I'm, I'm not the biggest. If you look throughout the SEC, I was probably the smallest pitcher at the time. I'm definitely smaller than the girls that are pitching nowadays, and. Uh, so in a lot of ways, I know how to get around limitations and how to push through them. And so I wouldn't say that I'm frustrated ever with them. I understand where they're coming from. I understand that pitching is a very hard thing and that it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of just mental perseverance and mental toughness. And those are the things that I like to teach. I get the most joy out of teaching those aspects of the game. In, in a sentence or two, what, what can we expect from the Belmont Bruins this season with, the, with their new head coach? I hope you see a lot of passion. I hope you see a lot of excitement for the game. And I hope you see a lot of discipline. I think those are the three things that I love to bring to the game, that I love about the game. And, and that's what I hope our fans see. All right. Megan Rhodes-Smith, new head coach for Belmont Bruins softball. Thanks so much for watching today.